Irving Goffman was born on June 11, 1922. He was a Canadian-born sociologist and writer and was best known for his contribution to social theory through the study of symbolic interaction. He was also the 73rd president of the American Sociological Association. As an undergraduate, Goffman studied sociology at the University of Toronto and later completed his graduate work at the University of Chicago. In 1959, he developed the study of face-to-face -face interaction, also known as microsociology, which he explains in depth in his book, The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life. In 1962, Goffman began his career as a professor at the University of California at Berkeley. Seven years later, he became the chair in sociology and anthropology at the University of Pennsylvania. History of the Framing Theory In 1974, Goffman published The Frame Analysis, an essay on the organization of experience, and became one of his well-known books. The book describes how conceptual frames structure an individual's perception of society and use the concept of a picture frame to explain this theory. Goffman describes that the frame represents structure and is used to hold together an individual's context of what they are experiencing in their lives, represented by a picture. The framing theory can be used for effective communication in all fields of media and other organizations, and it is mainly applied in understanding media effects. Effective communication among a large audience can be done with a well-organized framing of meanings and issues. For example, politicians can frame their vision effectively so that the public can understand its significance and accept it. What's in a frame? Framing is the way a communication source defines and constructs any piece of communicated information. It is used to represent the communication aspect which leads to the people's preference by consenting one meaning to another. The graph represents the effects of a message when it is being conveyed. Society, in which the degree of structural stability varies. Media, the number of centrality of the information function varies. Audience, the degree of dependency on media information varies, leading to effects and whether it is cognitive, affective, or behavioral. This theory stimulates the decision-making process by highlighting particular aspects and eliminating others. For instance, framing plays an important role in how a particular issue is presented before the people and how they perceive it. News that is presented creates a frame for that information. Here are some of the strengths of framing. An issue can be highlighted to emphasize on certain events. Framing can regulate the audience's perception and the acceptance of a particular meaning of a message. And lastly, negative framing can create a large impact on people since the media plays an important role in the audience's understanding. Some of the weaknesses of framing include biased media can negatively frame an issue and can influence a large group of people. Intuition and careful interpretation of the audience are inevitable when it comes to framing. The media is a powerful tool, so the content must be framed with values as it influences and controls the audience. Framing in mass communications today. For journalists, a frame refers to the way the media act as gatekeepers that organize and present ideas, events, and topics the journalists cover. Journalists then decide the frame in which the information will be presented accordingly. The newspaper frames the news within a particular point of view. This can change the way readers perceive the issue. Newspapers prioritize the news items and highlight accordingly to policies of the agency. In summary, framing is a set of concepts and theoretical perspectives on how individuals, groups, and societies organize, perceive, and communicate about reality.